Hello all. Welcome to Academy of Civil Service. How many of you watched the movie Ponyan Selvan Part 1? I think most of you are waiting for Ponyan Selvan Part 2. Am I right? And this movie that portrays one of the important dynasty in medieval India that was Imperial Chola dynasty. And this movie is particularly focused on the story of Ponyan Selvan. So who is known as Ponyan Selvan? Raja Raja Chola, the great ruler of Imperial Chola dynasty. Now our question, why this movie is named based on Ponyan Selvan? More than movie, let us go back to history. The Ponyan Selvan, actually this movie, it's based on a historical fiction that was written by Kalki Krishnamurthy. So this Kalki Krishnamurthy's Ponyan Selvan that portrays the story of our Raja Raja Chola who was one of the significant ruler during 10th to 11th century in the history of India, especially in the history of South India. But our question is why the term Ponyan Selvan? What is meant by Ponyan Selvan? The meaning of the term Ponyan Selvan is son of Pony. According to the stories, when our Raja Raja Chola, he was a child, around 5 years old, he was about to die in a river. He was about to die in river Kaveri. That time period, river Kaveri itself escaped him. So the Kaveri is known as Ponni and our Raja Raja Chola, he is son of Ponni or we can say Ponni and Selvan. And in the movie also, you must have seen, whenever some trouble comes to Raja Raja Chola, some kind of angel comes and escape Raja Raja Chola. That character, I think we can explore more in the Ponyan and Selvan part 2. Anyway, leave the film back, come back to history. So why Raja Raja Chola is considered as one of the important ruler? Why there is one historical fiction? that is spanning around five volumes and a movie spanning around two parts is being released on Raja Raja Chola. What makes Raja Raja Chola so significant? See, before Raja Raja Chola, there were early rulers in Chola dynasty like Vijayalaya, Aditya, Parandagavan. During the time period of Parandagavan, there was a battle called Battle of the Column. So Cholas were like a child starting to grow but because of battle of the column that was happened during Parandaga 1, this battle was between Imperial Cholas and the Rashtragudas. Imperial Cholas got defeated, completely disintegrated in the battle of the column that was fought in 10th century. So the Cholas which were starting to grow that was suddenly disintegrated under battle of the column. And we all say Sometimes failures are step to success. Am I right? Definitely. The battle of the column, the rulers after battle of the column, like Parandaga 2, Raja Raja Chola, Rajendra Chola, they have transformed our small Cholas into imperial Cholas. So after battle of the column, the father of our Raja Raja Chola, Parandaga II, who is also known as Sundara Chola, came into power because he is considered as epitome of male beauty. You must have seen Sundara Chola played by Prakash Raj in the film Ponyan Selvan Part 1, right? Now, after our Parandaga II or Sundara Chola, the next son of our Parandaga II, Raja Raja Chola, came into power. So, during this time period, it was a point of expansion of Imperial Cholas. Raja Raja Chola, he has done a lot of military campaign. He defeated Cheras, he defeated Pandyas, he defeated Western Chalukyas. So gradually, gradually the Chola power started to expand under Raja Raja Chola. But it was not limited to India. It was not limited to the boundary of India. During the time period of Raja Raja Chola, he has conquered northern part of Sri Lanka. He had also conquered the parts of the Maldives. So the power of the Cholas, it was not confined into India. It was spread outside of India. That's why we call them as Imperial Cholas. 
Now, apart from this, one of the significant contribution of the Cholas is in terms of temple architecture. Rajaraja Chola, he was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. He constructed a temple dedicated to Lord Shiva in the city of Tanjavur. Tanjavur was the capital of Cholas during that time period. And this temple, which is an excellent example of Dravidian temple architecture that we call as Brihadeshwara Temple at Tanjavur. Now, the film only portrays the story of Rajaraja Chola. But in history, the history of Imperial Cholas, that's not complete without the story of Rajendra Chola, who was son of the Rajaraja Chola. So we can say, Rajendra Chola, he was also like his father only. See, the history of Imperial Cholas does not stop here. Even though Ponyan Selvan may stop at Rajaraja Chola, we have to explore the campaigns under son of Rajaraja Chola, that was Rajendra Chola. Rajendra Chola, he was already part of military campaign during the time period of his father. He was one of the important assistant of his father in his Sri Lanka campaign. So during the time period of Rajendra Chola, like his father, he has grown the Imperial Cholas or we can say the extent of Imperial Cholas that reached at its peak during Rajendra Chola. He conquered entire part of Sri Lanka. Rajaraja Chola conquered only northern part of Sri Lanka, but Rajendra Chola, he conquered entire part of Sri Lanka. Apart from this, Rajendra Chola, he also conquered Keda region in Malaysia. After conquering Keda region, which was known as Kadaram during that time period, he assumed the title Kadaram Kondan. His campaign does not stop here. He also undertook a North Indian campaign, defeated Mahipala, who was the ruler of North India during that time period. And after defeating Mahipala, Rajendra Chola assumed the title Gangai Konda Chola. Chola who has conquered Ganga. After coming back to South, Rajendra Chola, he also established the city of Gangai Konda Cholapuram near Tanchavur in the state of Tamil Nadu. He assumed the title Gangai Konda Chola. He made Gangai Konda Cholapuram as the capital of Imperial Cholas. Now, apart from this, like his father, he had also constructed a temple at Gangai Konda Cholapuram, which is called as Brihadeshwara Temple at Gangai Konda Cholapuram. So, the extensive campaign that was done by Rajaraja Chola, Rajendra Chola, that makes these Chola rulers most significant rulers of Imperial Chola dynasty. Because after Rajendra Chola, you cannot see the growth of Imperial Cholas. Rather than that, we can see Imperial Cholas becoming more weak under the lighter rulers who were not that much excellent in leadership qualities like the earlier Cholas. Now, leaving the history apart, coming into the cultural perspective, I have told you Brihadeshwara Temple at Tanchavur that was built during the time period of Rajaraja Chola, Brihadeshwara Temple at Gangai Konda Cholapuram that was built during the time period of Rajendra Chola. So this two temple plus one temple in Tamil Nadu that we call as Great Living Chola Temple. And this Great Living Chola Temple, it's part of UNESCO World Heritage Site because they are excellent example of Dravidian style of temple architecture. Now, I want to ask you, which is the third temple apart from Brihadeshwara Temple at Tanchavur, apart from Brihadeshwara Temple at Gangai Konda Cholapuram, which is part of Great Living Chola Temples? So, if you know the answer, all of you can put your answer in the comment section. So, I hope all of you understood the significance of Imperial Chola Dynasty, especially under Rajaraja Chola and Rajendra Chola. Very significant. That's why UPSC had asked 
two times question in the mains exam regarding cultural contribution or contribution to India's heritage by the Chola Empire. So all of you think upon the cultural contribution of the Imperial Cholas. One significant aspect I have discussed temple architecture. But the cultural contribution does not end here. There is more that you have to explore especially the bronze sculpture of Nadaraja and the Tamil literature that were developed under Imperial Cholas. I hope all of you enjoyed the video. Thank you.